to try to install a version of ESX. So let's start going to our home tab. We want to create a new machine. So it's typical. I'm going to browse to an ISO file where I actually have the vSphere downloaded. So it's in my ESX folder. So this is my VMware hypervisor for my visor install. So I'll click next. This is about version 5, uh, relatively new. I want to save this on a different drive. So let's just change this to F VM new folder ESX5. We will up this a little bit because I'll, I'll probably plan to use this to put a few other virtual machines on. So we'll say 60. We'll do a single drive. Customize hardware. Let's get rid of this floppy drive. We don't need that. And. We'll leave this as NAT for now. We may need to change this to bridge, uh, depending if it, w or it works correctly or not. But let's go ahead and leave it as NAT. So we can hit finish. And it will boot for the first time. When it boots, yeah, this is good. Uh, we want to boot into our ESX size standard installer. So when ESX size is actually installed correctly, you will not get a lot of useful information. Uh, what you'll have is you'll have an IP address and some information about the machine. The way that you use your ESXi server is through the vSphere client. And so we'll look at that in another tutorial. But right now what we're trying to do is just to get the VMware ESXi 5 installed. So it's going through. It's still completing the install, but this is about what the screen is going to look like. We will get a little bit more information here in a moment. Okay, so it looks like it has finished. And so I have a message down here on the outside of my VMware workstation that says, Install VMware ESXi5 as you would on a physical computer. When you're, you're done, click to finish installing. So we're going to do this. Normally I would do this process directly onto a physical machine, but we're doing it inside of VMware workstation. So it's, uh, it's a little different than what you would do if you were actually booting right into it. It's still running some uh, some startup scripts here, so it's doing a RTT HRTTP. Okay. Okay. So welcome to the install install the most systems but only compatibility guide it's fine we'll hit enter to continue and we'll say F11 I accept okay so we want to install here United States password. Let's see if we can leave it blank. Again, we're using our VMware ESXi, which is traditionally a Type 1 virtual machine manager uh, or, or, or Type 1 hypervisor. Uh, but we're using it in kind of a hybrid mode. Let's see, it's configured to install right here. So we'll again hit F11. So we're installing this type 1 hypervisor through our type 2 hypervisor. So on this machine that I'm actually performing this install, I have Windows 7 installed as my host operating system. 
then I have VMware Workstation version 9 installed and this is an instance of the VMware ESXi which is our type 1 hypervisor the VMware workstation is our type 2 so it looks like they're playing fairly well together they're both from VMware uh, this isn't always the case so I have I've tried to do the same type of thing using Hyper-V within VMware workstation and I haven't been as successful uh, there, I haven't played around with it enough to say that it does not work, but it didn't work uh, very easily to, you know, just run through the way that I would expect it. So I'll pause it here while we run through the installation. Okay, it looks like our ESXi has been successfully installed, so we'll just need to... Um, reboot our computer and one thing it's telling us to remove the disk before rebooting again in our instance we didn't actually have a disk uh, so we'll just need to make sure that we tell it not to boot to that .iso file so we can go ahead and hit enter and so it's going to power down reboot see if I can go ahead and change that setting over here movable devices CD settings. So I'm going to just tell it to use my physical drive from now on. Okay, so it's rebooted. It looks like it's trying to boot. This is after our install was successful. Okay, so it's giving us our information. There's just a little more information it should be giving us here. So we can see our, uh, our uh, processor type, speed, and we can see the amount of memory that we're able to use. Again, we should hopefully have some additional information here in a moment. Ah, here we go. This is the information that we really need here. Okay, so what we have here, so we, so we can see we're on version VMware of SXI 5.1 and again we see our, our processor and our memory here's the extra information that we really needed so what we want to do is uh, get the tools to manage this uh, version of ESXi so we can either go to VMware and search around and try to find those tools or okay so I just had a few little IP address problems so I'm on this IP address scheme with my ESXi server. That's actually fine uh, because I'm going to boot into my Windows Server 2008 server. And what I'm going to do to be able to manage and do anything on this ESXi server, what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse to this IP address. So let's try to do that real quick. So 198.1. 68.132.132 and it's going to tell me that there's no certificate for that website that's not a problem you'll get a couple pop-ups okay so let's pick up where we left off so what I had to do is I had to add our 192.168.132.132 to as a trusted site once I did that, I was able to just browse this web page, and now I can download the vSphere client. What this will do is it will download the software that I'll need to manage our VMware ESXi server that's running over here in the background. Looks like it's not doing much. That's all this computer will ever do, uh, this VMware ESXi. 
this is all it needs to do in the background. The way that you really interface with it is over here on the uh, with the VMware vSphere client. So we'll download that. Again, I'm going to have to do a little bit of extra work here to make sure that this is a trusted site uh, since I'm using this on a Windows server. But that's all you'll do is you'll download that. I'll get that downloaded and then show you guys what that looks like. So while I'm trying to download it, I'm getting another pop-up that is that's saying that you're trying to download the software it's really from another website. That's actually fine with me. That's where I want to download the software from. But Windows Server, uh, by default, has a, a good bit of security built into it. So if you're trying to browse around using your Windows Server, it's not typically something that you would do. Um, but what I'm going to do is try to... Um, Let's see. I can go ahead and put that in here. Add, close, close. Go back to my 102.132 page. Go back to download my vSphere client. It says that's a trusted site now. Go ahead and save this. I'll just save it to my desktop for now. Save. So that'll take just a, a few minutes to download. So I'll go ahead and pause it again here. Okay, so it looks like my download has completed. So I'll go ahead and click run. What we're doing now is we're installing our vSphere client. So again, this machine's running on, I think, 2 gigs of RAM. So you'll see it's running a little slower than what a, a real-life uh, production machine would run. But it should be still sufficient to, to do everything that we need it to do. The place where we would really need the RAM when we actually start using this machine is we would need it in our ESXi server over here, which also only has 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, but theoretically, we will be building multiple... Uh, virtual machine instances on this ESXi server and so each ESXi server or each ESXi instance that we put on here will, is going to need some of this RAM so you see 2 gigs of RAM won't go very far for, for very many machines so it looks like this is taking just a minute so I'm going to pause it here There was actually a notification that I, I, I didn't see originally that was uh, causing us our delay there. So it wasn't really taking that long. There was just a uh, user control pop-up box that I wasn't seeing. Okay, so it's extracting our download. Another thing, so at one point I needed to go into Windows Task Manager and again, I'm in a virtual machine, so if you need, ever need to click con or uh, press Control Alt Delete for VMware Workstation, the default is Control Alt Insert. And if you're working on a, a laptop computer where your insert key is a function key, so you'll actually end up pressing Control Function Alt Print Screen. That's that's what I have to press. But let's go ahead and continue through here. Again, if, if you remember when we were going through and installing our ESXi server, it gave us a, a place to create a username and password. So I left the password blank in the default username uh, for ESXi. It's based off of Zen, which is based off of Linux. Uh, so the, the admin account that we're usually kind of interested in is instead of being called admin or administrator, it's called root. So when this boots up, eventually uh, I'll log in. We should be able to log into to the IP address of our ESXi machine with the username of root and password. I believe it's blank. If it's not blank, I think I saved it as password. So what I'm doing is test kind of configuration. I do, you know, 
lay down the security big time uh, for something that I'm not going to deploy in the real world just for ease of use and just to make it where I can actually remember what's going on. So this vSphere client that's installing, what it's really going to do is it's going to provide a connection, a management console for us to get to our ESXi machine. And it's going to have a SQLite database or some sort of database in the back end that will keep track of all of our different virtual machines. And so it looks like it's installing some of those components right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here because it looks like this might take a minute. So I will be right back after these messages. Alright, so our vSphere client 5.1 installation has finished. Okay, so our VMware vSphere client is installed. So let's go ahead and open this up for the first time. Okay, so now this is this is what you'll see after this is installed. So if you don't know what you're doing here, again, after you had your ESXi server installed and you just get that one little screen, if you don't know what you're doing here, you're also going to be lost. But uh, what we're looking for here is we're just looking for the IP address of the ESXi server. So I believe it was this. And again, our password, we left blank, I believe. And we're using root as our login. If I had Active Directory set up, we could use this. So I would log into whatever this machine is uh, that would authenticate through Active Directory. And I would set up some... Uh, additional settings over on the ESXi server. Uh, we won't be doing any of that for this. So let's hit login. So it tells you that you know, this is untrusted. So let's see if we can tell it to go ahead and ex install this certificate so that we don't have to see this any longer. So we'll click install and just trying to connect loading inventory so this is this is promising that it's doing this for us all right so this is perfect so by default uh, when you download the vSphere client you get the 60-day trial version of the paid uh, version which has a lot more functionality than the free version so right now I've, I've started my 60-day trial and it's just letting me know that I can assign a license to to this machine here but uh, we won't do that right now all right so so that's it so this is where we're at so this probably looks somewhat familiar uh, as as it would in the uh, VMware workstation but now we're using vSphere client and so this gives you all the information about your machine uh, we can tell that this is done on uh, a white box because we see the manufacturer it's actually picking up VMware as the manufacturer rather than picking up HP or Dell as my manufacturer uh, my license I'm in evaluation mode and you can see these are it's just the this is the resources that I have assigned to this virtual machine and from here uh, in a future tutorial what we could do is we could create new virtual machines um, by going new virtual machine and then going through the the um, the process so that's on that's how we set up our ESXi that's how we set up vSphere to connect to our ESXi client uh, our VS, vSphere client to connect to our ESXi server sorry and that's it so Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. It is a very complex uh, setup, but if you go through, follow the steps, uh, do some basic troubleshooting along the way as we had to do, then it's really not too bad at all. So, thank you and have a great day. Remember, you know, if you're trying to do this on your own, you can always go back and rewatch this video. So, thanks and have a great day.